everyone. Uh, welcome to, to the machine vision in agriculture class. And then this is the continuation from our previous classes. All of that, this class will deal, uh, we'll talk about deep learning for image classification. So in the other classes, we are dealing mostly just as uh, simple, simple functions or simple pre-processing functions, how to pre-process images. But this time now we start uh, with the practical part, more, more uh, real-world examples of the, the way uh, deep learning or computer vision is used in machine vision in agriculture. So when we start, we'll have to understand some few concepts. And these are the concepts that uh, you will normally uh, come across them. So uh, I'll design, there are a lot of concepts, but I'll just take a uh, few concepts that are relevant to, uh, to what we're going to do in the practical part. And then uh, we'll also have to install some uh, deep learning frameworks. In this uh, tutorial, we're going to use TensorFlow. There are many frameworks, uh, APIs that can be used uh, with the uh, training models or optimizing them. But in this tutorial, we'll use TensorFlow. And then we'll also talk about how you can process your data with these uh, TensorFlow APIs. And we'll see some of the common uh, APIs that, that we use. And finally, we'll train our classification model and we'll also try to optimize it and then load and, and then save it. So that will be the end uh, of, uh, of that, uh, of this lesson with uh, classification of these models and so on. And uh, so we'll, we'll begin with the basics, which is, uh, understanding these uh, normally what we call buzzwords uh, that are commonly used uh, or you will come across them. For instance, uh, you come across what people are talking about AI, machine learning, or artificial neural networks and deep learning. So what are all these? Um, so with the, with the, with the uh, artificial neural, I mean, I'll start with the artificial intelligence. Uh, so artificial intelligence refers to all the theory and developing of machines that are intelligent and they that can uh, simulate the way uh, human beings think, uh, the capabilities, they can simulate the capabilities of human beings and the behavior of human beings. So the, the, the process of having such machines, creating such machines is known as uh, these, uh, it's referred to as artificial intelligence. And uh, normally, for instance, tasks that we are normally uh, that will normally require human intelligence is what uh, artificial intelligence these machines are, are being uh, capable of doing. For instance, let's say tasks such as object detection, or like if you want to count the number of cars that are in a particular road or in a particular street, uh, the, the, these are tasks that uh, uh, humans will do, but if you have a lot of cars now, you want to have now artificial intelligence, these machines that are intelligent, they can help you do the task. And then we talk about machine learning, for instance, uh, machine learning now is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence. And this is uh, this allows machines to, to, to get an output based on the previous data and experience. So you don't need to explicitly program these machines. It's just that it will learn from the data and also from the past experience in define it to get the patterns and give you an output corresponding to, to the patterns in the data that is fed into it. And uh, another thing is the artificial neural networks. And in short, I can say these are brain inspired uh, machine learning models. And uh, they are computational models that also they mimic the way the nerve cell in the central nervous system functions. So they, they, are, they, are, they were inspired by these, uh, the nerve cells. And uh, finally, we'll talk about deep learning, which is the center of this, uh, this uh, tutorial. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks. And often you'd hear, well, so what's the difference between the, the two, meaning that what's the difference between uh, deep learning and machine learning? So with traditional machine learning, the feature extraction, is in manual work, meaning that you'd have somebody has to define these features. For instance, if you have a car here, meaning that you need to define what are the distinguishing features for this model that can be fed into this model to for it to determine if it's an output is a car or not a car. But with deep learning and uh, deep learning, all the feature extraction, the classification is done by the model. So this is what we call representation learning. So deep learning 
has this uh, what we call representation learning, which is that uh, it will allow we, it, it, it's, it's allowing uh, approaches all the approaches that allow machines to get distinguishing features from from the data from these uh, from the data that is fed into it and understand the patterns. And then now it's when it's still, either if it's doing classification, classify uh, either for, for a case here, we have an input as a car. So the machine, the model will do all that to understand what are the feature, distinguishing features to identify this is a car or not a car. So that's the, that, that's the key difference between the two that, uh, between the machine learning and, uh, and deep learning. I hope that is clear. Uh, Clearly, it's, it's, it was a short way, but I hope that is clear to you. So yeah, neural networks have an input layer, all neural networks, I mean, they'll have this input layer, which accepts an input vector. And then we have these hidden layers, which are these, these hidden layers, the intermediary layers, and then the output layer, which returns an output corresponding to what is fed as the input. So the input layer, I say it takes in the, the, the vector, the input vector. For instance, you have like three features. So the, the, the input will take three features, uh, one, two, three. So it will take, depending on the number of features that you have, that is what is going to get into the input layer. And these features are then carried out, to carry to the next layers and so on. The output layer now, it depends on the number of outputs that you want. If you're having maybe let's say five classes, meaning that the output will have five neural networks to determine the classes that you want. So the output layer also is determined by the number of classes that you want as an output. So yeah, so that is in short about artificial neural networks. And this can be represented because like I said, the, these are brain inspired machine learning models. And if you can remember, uh, uh, this is just biology. So yeah, it was inspired by this, uh, a nerve cell, you can see the dendrites, the axon, and so on. So now a single a single layer is what is known as a perceptron. So a single neural network layer is uh, similar, very similar to the linear regression model. And uh, this is how it is represented. It has the sum submission of the weights and the input to understand what are weights. And most of the time, these are randomly initialized. And uh, then we have the, we'll talk about activation functions in the, these activation functions are just like a gate. They'll allow the firing of that neuron, meaning that it will allow some values to, to depending on the condition that is stated in that function, it's when the neuron is going to be fired or not. And, uh, and the, for instance, you have, this is an example. So if you have maybe the input uh, like 0.5, 0.2, and zero, then you have the weights, let's say they are one. So the summation, the, the, the product of these is then summed. And then now if you have a function, let's say if you have a function that if X is greater than 0 0.5, then that's, that's, you can say it's one, otherwise it is zero. So that's, a, that's, that's like a gate allowing that all the values that are greater than five, I mean, they're greater than 0 0.5 to be known as output, otherwise they, they are not. So that's what uh, these uh, neural networks, uh, in short, this is what they do. And uh, now, like I said, before we talk about activation function, we'll talk about weights. What is a weight? So weights control the signal. So in short is that uh, the weights decides how much the, the influence, the input will have on the output. And uh, now, Without the without with only the weights, you really need to include another another factor, which is the bias. So in in each neuron, this linear combination of the weights, the inputs, and the bias, and the bias is a constant, similar to that of the linear equation. If you remember the the equation of the line, so it's similar to that. It allows uh, it allows even if all the inputs are zero. So if you have a bias, it allows the the activation of, of that neuron and. Uh, Without the bias means that your, your model will be very limited. It means that it will have a hard time generalizing and getting the solution. So you need to have to include that bias and uh, yeah, to make sure that your model is not that limited. And uh, so this is the, final, the equation that you have to have a bias added by this, the sum of these, uh, the products of the inputs and the weights. So this in short, in general, this is how it's uh, understand. So the, the activation function is a function of these 
z, which is uh, some of these uh, bias or the offset value and the weights, the product of the weights and the inputs. So th this is in general uh, what uh, what is fed into an activation function. Now these activation functions I've mentioned the, before that these are they function as a mathematical gate and uh, they, they, they feed uh, between the feeding input or feeding in the current neuron and its output going to the next layer. So they, they, they act as a gate, they allow some values to go through and others are restricted depending on the condition that is specified on that function. So they decide whether the neuron should be activated or not. And they also introduce some non-linearities in the neural network model. And uh, these activation functions, some of them are, there are uh, some which are used in the intermediary layers and some of them, some of these activation functions that are used at the output of the output layers of that model. So some of the common activation functions are like, let's, let me share this. Um, for instance, you have, uh, like if you're doing binary classification, the common activation functions that you use is the sigmoid function. If you're doing, uh, you have a lot of classes that you want to classify, uh, the softmax function is the one that is normally used. So there are many, you, you, some of them are even custom made. So there are many, and um, I've also included, for instance, in the hidden layers, the ReLU is really uh, popular, it's really used. And also I've included two links here, which are the, the more detailed on uh, uh, these activation functions. And uh, one thing also you should know, let me share also the other, um, this, uh, this is a cheat sheet uh, with some of the uh, commonly used activation functions. For instance, uh, the sigmoid function, you can see how the sigmoid function is, and it's mostly used in the logistic regression, binary classification, and uh, also the leaky relu, the relu. So tanch, sometimes in the hidden layers, we also use the tanch as the activation functions. For instance, if you're doing recurrent neural networks, um, the tanch is normally used. So there are many activation functions. This is just to show you that there's a lot. So you need to go through those links to get a better understanding of, of these functions. For instance, if you want to now, like for this uh, six point function, if you want to output between zero and one, like uh, probabilities, output is probably between zero, zero and one. So you use this uh, sigmoid function. Yeah, so let's go back to what we were sharing before. And uh, so these, these links, uh, they give you a very detailed uh, description of each of the commonly used activation functions.